Hey everyone, so as promised, here is part two of my cloak uh, tutorial. Now, if you haven't seen part one, um, I would click the screen right now and that will take you to the tutorial. You by no means have to, but yes, if you actually want to make the tutorial linked on the screen right now is part one. So where we left off, we are now up to the stage of overlocking. Now this is really important because both of these fabrics will fray quite a bit if we don't. And because I'm leaving the lining and the outer fabric not completely attached. When you wash it and wear it there will be a bit of wear and tear on the seam allowance so you definitely do have to overlock those seams. So forcing our, our seam allowance together hop on your overlocker but if you don't have an overlocker you can always hop on your sewing machine on a really wide zigzag and run down your shoulder slash side seams first. Uh, make sure you do those first and then once you've done those um, we want to overlock our hem. Now of course once you've done this to your wool you have to repeat the process to our very frayable lining. Now comes the fun part of pinning together both of our cloaks. So placing both of our cloaks good side to good side I always like to start at a seam so I start at one side of my center front hood uh, seam and work down the center front. Now to make this process go a lot smoother I I always like to pull my outer fabric taut and let the lining fabric sit slightly slack. It's weird but for some reason I just find that helps the jacket to sit a lot nicer when you understitch it. So once you've pinned down from that neck seam all the way down to the hem on one side of the center front, I do it on the other side of the center front and then I come back and pin the hood seam together and this is what it should roughly look like. Um, it will make a lot more sense um, when you're actually doing it in person. And then I hop on the jacket and do it in one long seam. I start at the hem of one side of the jacket, go all the way up to the next seam, over the hood, and then come back down. Now, I do want to point out at this point that you will want to stitch five centimeters up from our lining because you're going to need to um, hem that. So instead of unpicking later, as you can see here, I'm just going to back stitch. I did it a little bit closer, but I would say five centimeters up from your seam allowance um, on your hem. Now comes top stitching. Now this just really helps to pull the entirety of the jacket together and helps it to sit really nice and flushly once we've ironed it. So with our lining on one side and our outer cloak fabric on the other, we want to pull our seam allowance, which is obviously underneath the sewing machine right now, towards our lining side and catch it with this row of stitching that we're doing now. This is what you call top stitching or under stitching depending on what you like to call it. Uh, yeah, as I said before, this is a really nice way of just making everything sit really nice and flat when you hop on the iron. Which of course is our next step to press the seam that we just stitched in place. So basically all this is doing is just helping our lining fabric from flipping out by pressing that uh, fold in place. So yeah, as you can see, I am just running along both of the center front seams and then eventually along the hood just to help hold that satin lining back from flipping out and seeing it when you are wearing it. Now, if you've gone for the point in the hood, now is the time where you have to get your scissors and really carefully push out that point so it's nice and sharp. And then we will be attaching the both of the points in on each other. So as you can see here, uh, through the satin lining, I'm poking a needle and thread that's just got some matching thread on it. And then I'll be bringing that in and through and back out the other side of the top outside of our hood. I hope that kind of made sense. Um, but if you don't do this step, Basically, the point in the lining of the hood is going to keep slipping out, which, I mean, isn't really that big of a deal, but it would just annoy me. So, yeah, just securing those two points in on each other. And then the only real way to knot this off is from the outside. It's virtually impossible to get back in um, to the lining arm um, point. So, yeah, I'm just knotting that off, as you can see here, from the outside. Now you don't necessarily have to do this next step, like everything I'm showing you, it's all pretty much optional, but this just really helps secure the hood in place and also I feel just stabilizes that neck seam. Uh, if you don't stitch this, sometimes you can see the lining flip out a little bit more. So basically I am just pinning along um, the neck seam that we've got going on there and I'm forcing both of the seam allowances up into the hood. Uh, I'm doing that with my fingers if you can see, I'm just rubbing it and slipping it um, I'm forcing it up ways and then just pinning along um, horizontally with some pins. I will then come back uh, on the sewing machine and stitch, ditch, stitch as some people like to call it. 
along that seam that we stitched before. Uh, I am going to stitch from the lining because most of the time you wear the hood down and I feel like it's more important for the lining to look pretty rather than the outer fabric. It's always really hard to get this to line up properly. I mean, if you're a real fanatic, you can go along and tack this in place and then machine stitch it. But I'm a little bit lazy at this point and it was late at night. So um, I'm just going to pin it and then hop on the machine and ditch stitch along that neck seam. We then just need to flip up and top stitch our uh, wool hem. I went for a 0.7 millimeter to one centimeter seam allowance. And then to finish off our center front corner, as you can see here, I'm just gonna flip up a small triangle wedge of the hem and then fold it over yet again. And you get a really neat um, salvage free edge. And cause the corners are really hard to, whenever you stitch a corner like that, sometimes you always see the seam allowance and the overlocking spraying out. But if you uh, fold up that little triangular wedge first and then flip over and top stitch it, um, it stops you from seeing that ugly little corner. Now comes the terrifying slash incredibly exciting part where we cut off our leftover um, hem of our satin lining. Now the first thing you need to do is either put it on a mannequin, but if you don't have a mannequin, put it on a coat hanger and let it rest for a day. I know that sounds really weird, but something you need to know about satin lining and satin is, in general is that it drops on the bias a lot. Uh, it's dropped by about 10 to 12 centimeters. Uh, they, were the, they were cut at the exact same length as you saw, but they have dropped, as you can see, by a considerable amount so let it drop and rest for that day and then come back the next evening and yep if you don't have a mannequin leave it on the coat hanger if you could use a person if a parent or a friend is lying around and they're willing to stand there for about 10 minutes while you do this throw the um, cloak on them inside out and essentially what I'm doing is just trimming off the excess right in line with uh, the hem of our wool lining. I will just say at this point, it does make a little bit of a difference if you match up and pin both of your side seams. So the satin lining and the wool, if you pin the side seams in place, it just gives you a bit of a guideline to go by. Then hop back on your overlocker and overlock off approximately one and a half inches uh, off your already cut hem. This will just ensure that um, when you wear the cloak you're not ever going to see any of the satin lining so take it up by that little bit and then of course hop back on your sewing machine and top stitch the satin lining hem up in place and then the last thing you want to do is basically stitch on your fastening now as I said before I went for a really ugly boring uh, hook and eye it's completely invisible and you can't see it I would advise that but you can always go for something fancy schmancy this is the outfit that I've paired the cloak with. Uh, it's a little bit out there, one I would probably wear with my girlfriends, but I have gone for my grey suede Jeffrey Campbell leaders, a pair of my uh, thigh-high DIY um, socks. Uh, I would probably pair it with opaque tights. I just couldn't bear to put hot tights on at this point in the night. It was really hot when I filmed this. Uh, I thrifted that mint um, school skirt, which I absolutely love, and I wish I knew which school used mint in their uniform because I freaking love it. And then I'm just wearing a cotton on, it's actually a guy's top that I found a cotton on, um, but I bought that one firsthand. Um, and then I've also got a little bit of black ribbon that I tied around my neck in a little bit of a bow. I'm going for a bit of a romantic feel here. Um, I know I probably look like a weirdo, but I love wearing chokers around my neck. It's something that I am definitely getting into um, and I'm seeing a lot more of. Thanks for sticking around, kiddo. I know that this was probably an incredibly long video, but hopefully it was worth it um, and that you learnt a couple of techniques, even if you can't apply it to this tutorial because it's a little bit tricky. Maybe you could have used some of the techniques um, for an easier tutorial that you have in mind. Um, but yes, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, you could always subscribe to my channel. I post, well, I'm trying to post more tutorial-esque videos rather than um, hauls and stuff like that because I feel like you guys like watching tutorials more than anything else. Uh, all of that being said, if you wanted to subscribe to my Instagram, that's what it's called, my username there is at Pepperminty Milk. I post um, just videos on what I'm getting up to, and by videos I mean pictures of what I'm getting up to, um, up and coming hauls, giveaway dresses, things that I'm working on. So if you guys like these videos, then you could always follow my Instagram. I think that was everything I had to mumble over. Um, I hope you guys are happy and well and enjoying the new year because I know I am. And that's it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.